Hey traders, what's going on? This is Chris from Virillo Trading. Hope you guys are doing great today. In today's video, we're going to talk about building correlation charts. I'm going to run you through the process, um, I guess, of the rabbit hole that I've gone down here to discover a few things about the platform Sierra Chart in regards to building charts with correlations or market relationships on them. So if this is some content that's interesting to you, if you find it helpful, let me know down below and leave a like on the video. Let's get it guys. Here's my idea to start and then I'm going to run you through the process that I went through to discover a few things in regards to building correlation charts in Sierra Chart. So. When it comes to looking at market relationships, there's a few different ways that traders tend to do it. One way is with a quote board. So if you look at videos of floor traders back in the 80s and 90s and 2000s, they're always looking up at the quote screens to see what's going on. Well, this is an example of a modern day quote board here. So in this case, I've got the S&P and the NASDAQ futures followed by the top 50% holdings of the NASDAQ. So again, that's just an idea. So one way of looking at these relationships is through a quote board, and that's what you have right here. And in this quote board, I can see the last traded price, the daily change percentage or in a price if you want to see it that way. And you can see the last trade if it was an uptick or a downtick. If the market was open, you would either see a plus or a minus here in these boxes. Now, the issue I ran into with this is that when the market is live trading, I'm watching the S&P and the NASDAQ, for example, and I find it very hard to keep an eye on the quote board on the side and watch the market relationships between FANG stocks and the NASDAQ, for example. This is the reason exactly why I have explored the idea of creating a chart that will show you this market relationship in a different way visually on the screen. So that's what we're gonna get into now, creating a correlation chart. Many of you have probably seen this before on other trader screens where you see market relationships are being displayed in the form of a line graph. And I guess this is just a different way to display it on your screen visually. Potentially, it would be easier for traders to react to it this way. Again, it all depends on how you process that information. So I'm not saying that this is going to be the best way. I'm just going to go over in this video what I've discovered in regards to what I'm trying to do right here, which is make correlation charts. Okay. So the first video I ran into on YouTube was this one right here by this YouTuber, Moo Trader who made a very clear and concise video about making a correlation chart in Sierra chart. So what this trader did in this video is he created two charts. The first one was for the Euro US dollar, and then he created a separate chart for the US against the Swiss franc. And then what the trader did was he used a study in Sierra chart called the study price overlay, and he overlaid the Swiss franc onto the Euro dollar chart and that's what it looks like right there. And also later in the video, he showed an interesting study that is available in Sierra Chart called the correlation coefficient, which essentially is meant to show you what the difference is between two assets that you program into the study. All right, so that's kind of where this all started. And then I started to try stuff and to do some reading myself. So again, exploring the study and price overlay, I already used this study to overlay certain indicators onto a depth of market. They say, if you need to overlay the main price graph from another chart that has the same chart bar period, which is based on a fixed amount of time, example, five minutes per bar, and the same session times as the chart you're overlaying to, then it is best to use the overlay bar study. It is more efficient. So if Sierra Chart is saying that using this study overlay bar is more efficient, potentially in terms of processing power CPU usage, if they're saying that it's more efficient, then I trust them because these guys are the pros. So then what I did after that is I went over to the overlay bar study and I started reading about this. This study overlays the main price graph from another already open source chart onto the chart this study is applied to, the destination chart. Then they go on to say, this is an older study and it is now recommended to use the newer add additional symbol study instead. So what we're doing here is we're going down a bit of a rabbit hole clearly because the first choice was to use the study price overlay, but then they're telling us that it's more efficient to use overlay bar study. Then we go to overlay bar study and they're telling us now that it's actually better to use the add additional symbol study instead. Okay, so now we'll go over to the add additional symbol study. It allows the chart bar data for an additional symbol to be added to either a historical or an intraday chart in a separate chart region. 
It can also be in the same chart region. The data is read directly into the chart. There is no need for a separate chart. The purpose of this study is to visualize the bar data for another symbol within the same chart and also to perform custom calculations that involve the main price graph and the chart bar data for an additional symbol or multiple symbols. So in short, this is exactly what we're trying to do here. However, they've made it simpler in the sense that we don't need to have multiple reference charts anymore and overlay them onto your parent chart. You can simply have one chart and then use this add additional symbol to overlay those extra symbols onto your chart. So now let's get to the platform here and we're gonna talk about different things. So prior to making this video and doing this research, I actually did it my own way. So what I did originally was I created a very simple chart for the NASDAQ futures and I set the graph draw type to just be a line on close. And that's what the yellow line is in this case. And I just have to note really quickly is that in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to overlay FANG stocks onto a chart of the NASDAQ. That's the example I'm gonna be using. And in order to do that, I'm actually connected to my Interactive Brokers account into Sierra Chart because in Interactive Brokers, the data for level one FANG stocks only costs $1.50 a month. So for me, that was a quick way to just get the level one quotes of the FANG stocks. So I'm actually using a separate instance of Sierra Chart to connect to Interactive Brokers and get this data. And I would recommend that. So if you are going to be doing some more complicated overlaying of charts with different symbols it would make sense to do this in a separate instance of sierra chart from the one that your trading doms are on with your main trading platform service again just a quick note that i'll add there so the way i originally did this was i created a very simple main chart here for nasdaq futures and then what i did was i created a whole bunch of reference charts for each of the fang stocks in this case, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, S&P Futures, Google, Nvidia, and Facebook. And then what I did was I created a whole bunch of study price overlays, and I overlaid each one of them individually onto this chart. And now I've hidden them, but if I unhide a few of them, you'll kind of see. So in this way, I'm able to see market relationships between the NASDAQ and the FANG stocks in the top 50% holdings of the NASDAQ. So for the purpose of this video, I'm now going to create a new correlation chart, but I'll be using the add additional symbol study instead of overlaying a whole bunch of reference charts onto the main chart here. So let's do it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the existing studies that are on my chart here, except for the correlation coefficient because we might be using that later. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna overlay these FANG stocks onto the price of the NASDAQ and they're all going to appear on the same price scale. So on your chart, you wanna press F6 or you can go to analysis and then studies. Now when we're here, we wanna to go to the add additional symbol study right here. We wanna add one. Now we'll go into that study and I'll click on the top here where it says symbol. And since I'm connected to interactive brokers, it knows the symbols already. So I can just type in the stock ticker symbol. In this case, I'll start with Apple. So AAPL and then I'll hit apply. Okay. Now what we can see is that it has appeared in chart region two. Now, if you don't know how Sierra chart works with chart regions, you could essentially display many pieces of data in different regions of the chart. Now, for the purpose of this example, we want everything to be in chart region one because we wanna be watching the relationship between these markets on one price scale. So for this, we're going to make sure that this indicator is set to chart region one. Now, the next thing is when you hit apply, you're gonna notice that the line disappeared. The reason it disappeared is because the scale is not set to the right thing. You need to make sure it's set to the independent scale range. When I hit apply there, now you're gonna see that it appears on the main price graph here. Now, another thing you're gonna notice is that the line color is matching the same color line as the main price graph. We don't want that. The way you fix it is you go to subgraphs. Now, you're gonna notice that whenever you try to change something here, for example, if I try to change that and hit apply, it will go back to the original. This setting is the setting I have for the main price graph, but because we're adding additional symbols here, we want them to be different colors. So we have to go to the top of the chart here where it says use chart graphic settings for subgraph colors. We wanna uncheck that. Now when I apply this, I can change this to any color and it will change colors right there, okay? So let's say I wanted to make this a width of one, and actually I'll make it the color red because Apple's 
generally are red. All right, so we have succeeded in adding one symbol to our chart. Now let's do the same and repeat the process for all the additional symbols. Now, an easier way you can do this now, since we have already configured this study to be the right thing, what we're gonna do is click on the study and then we're going to duplicate that a few times. And then all we need to do is go into the new studies we created and change the symbols. So now let's create one for Microsoft. Let's apply that. And you can see now Microsoft is on our chart. You would probably want to change the color of each one as you add them in. We can go and get Amazon. The next one would be Google, Tesla. Let's duplicate it two more times. Let's do Facebook as well as Nvidia. So now what I'm gonna do is go into each one of these individually and change the color of the line. So last traded price, change it to whatever color you want. In this case, it's Microsoft. I'll make it something like a light purple potentially. So now I've got all these correlations onto this chart and then it's up to the trader to determine what is going to be the appropriate scale range and scale settings here. So I haven't really been able to experiment with this too much yet. But depending on how much data you're allowing to show on the chart, the scale range will differ depending on if you have it set to automatic or a constant range. So I have it set to automatic here, and it seems as though all the quotes are being displayed on the price graph right now. But again, I will have to test this in real time hours to see exactly if it's performing the way I want it to be. So now to put this chart in context, as you can see here, I'm displaying it on the side of my depth of markets. Um, where I can see the relationship between the price of the NASDAQ and the underlying FANG stocks. Again, this is just an experiment and I haven't tested it in a live market environment yet, but I just wanted to make this video to potentially help traders that wanted to learn more about creating correlation charts. It doesn't really matter what is going on in the actual chart. What I'm more concerned about is actually the most recent data here so actually what I could do is put something else on top of this graph, potentially a quote board or potentially that plus minus thing that I had going on earlier. So again, different ways to kind of visualize data. It's very important for traders to explore different ways to visualize and uh, display data on their screen in a very simple and organized manner so that your decisions can also be very simple to the point to know exactly what it is you're doing and why. Very quickly before we end the video, we can talk about the correlation coefficient study. Now let's see if this works here. So the study is the correlation coefficient. I'm gonna click on that study. I'm gonna display it in chart region two. And we have two inputs. The first input is market number one. The second input is market number two. The point of the study is to determine what the correlation between those two markets is. So in this case, input array one, I'm gonna leave it on the main price graph. So we're gonna measure what the correlation is between the NASDAQ and input number two in this case, which I will set to, I'll leave it on Facebook, why not? And we'll leave that on the last traded price. We'll apply that, unhide the study, and there we go. Now, the length of the study by default is set to 200, and it's gonna be 200 bars based on whatever time frame your chart is set to. So if it was on a daily time frame, it would be 200 days. In this case, it's a 15 second chart. So the math you get for the correlation coefficient is only going to apply to whatever time frame you set that to. So in this case, you can see it's about a 0.71 or something, and it does change throughout the course of the day here. But if you do want to see better data, you probably want to use a bigger time frame there. So what we're seeing here is how much the correlation is between the NASDAQ and the stock Facebook. And I guess this is an important tool if you're trying to learn more about market relationships, trying to discover new market relationships that might be correlating to your underlying market. I also discovered this, which I can throw in the description which is an internet website that is showing you 30 day correlations all the way up to 180 day correlations. So I clicked on 30 day correlations here and it looks as though we have all of the major futures markets in this case. So what it's telling us in this case is that the S&P 500 futures over the last 30 days have around a 94% correlation to the NASDAQ futures. And that's it, so I'll throw that in the description. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and I will catch you in the next one. Take care, bye.